everybody, welcome to the Art Corner. I thought I'd give you guys a bit more of a different introduction and get you guys puffing and going and getting all excited. I'm excited, I feel like I'm selling steak knives, but anyway, I'm excited. Now, let me just put away the, um, the radio and it's um, nearly 2 p.m., but I might just wait and see how everybody else is going and hopefully tune in and get you guys um, all nice and settled. Okay, cool, really, really exciting, really cool. Um, super excited. Now, um, a quick introduction, of course. I'm the only person that's actually filming this. I don't have a back crew that's going to be able to filter um, directly as you're typing or any of your questions um, or anything like that. So. Please feel free to comment, please feel free to, um, to like and to make your comments and ask questions and I'll definitely, definitely get to all those questions a little bit later on. So super excited. Now, um, a lay of the land, I did write some things down because you know my brain truly thinks at warp speed and um, sometimes I actually miss words that are in my head and it comes out really weird. Uh, my partner always tells me that, but hey, he lives with me, so he's, all, uh, you know, he tolerates me. <laughs> um, so if, um, if I do miss something, you know, just as a FYI, brain's gone into another world. Anyway, now, um, okay, so let me do a formal introduction again. You saw me go crazy with Van Halen, incredible, incredible band, it, you know, for anybody that's tuned into all my social media. Van Halen and Michael Jackson's Bad was my first, first CD. Um, in actual fact, I pinched it off my brother when I was super little, but that was the only music that was in our house, and so it's kind of stuck with me. So that was an introduction to Van Halen. Um, okay, so welcome everybody again to my studio, to my fabulous art corner. My name is Miriana Persakis. Everybody calls me Mim. Again, wholeheartedly, thank you for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you guys coming here. Uh, incredibly, incredibly excited for you to um, join. Now, I wanted to um, give you guys a quick heads up to, it is my deep, deep, deep belief, an incredible belief that every single person can paint, can draw, can sculpt, cross stitch, whatever your creative outlet, you can do it. Now, what stops us to get us to that point is actually our own fears in our own heads. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick, quick story um, that I, um, I'm incredibly proud of, but I'm actually incredibly proud of my boys. And I call them boys because they're actually 60, 70, 80 year old men. Um, but a quick story on how that started. If they're watching, my love to the Bundanoon men's shed in Bundanoon. Um, Six, six years ago, or five years, five to six years ago, I had this idea based on circumstance and what I was observing around me that the men that were retiring, and particularly men that were in that 65, 75 year age bracket, were um, not expressing their creative outlet. Um, yes, they were in, in you know, this um, maybe creative space of woodworking, metalworking, but not necessarily actually working with oil paint. And, I approached an organization in Abundanood called The Men's Shed and pitched them the idea that I think they need to open up an art group. And that took about six months to actually get started. And I must say, um, one gentleman who did champion all of that was Robert. Again, Robert, thank you for putting all that together then. Um, and the reason why I say that is when we got started, it was a bit rocky, you know, people were uncertain what to do. And it's purely because, uh, you know, men that are in that 60, 70, 80 year old bracket that have worked incredibly hard, you know, white collar, blue collar worker did the manly thing. There's always this fear that um, what, what would people think about me? You know, it's not a very, it's too, you know, oil painting is more feminine than actually masculine. Um, nonetheless, those barriers were broken and the group that started are, are absolutely incredible. I mean, they've gone to the point that they have, you know, they participate in the um, town's winter festival, they exhibit, they've got their own studio, they're going to take also part in uh, their local markets, which is absolutely huge. Now, the reason why I say this, that this is the only group in the Southern Highlands that are actual men in that bracket that are painting. And this is a huge, huge achievement. Now. You know, I'm not telling you this to, to pat me on my back. This has got nothing to do with my skills. Yes, you know, I can teach and I'm a painter and I love doing that. But where I excel is igniting people's passion for something. And, you know, what I did for them is purely ignite their inner drive and then simply direct them to the point 
that got them to where they are right now. And their mindset is absolutely brilliant. You know, there are men that have had challenges physically and I've actually rocked in, not complaining, not saying that they couldn't do it, sitting down, painting with their left hand because their right hand, you know, is totally out of use. So my point in the statement that I began with is to say that every single person can paint. Um, there is no such thing as I can't do it. The only aspect of I cannot is really the fears and the barriers that are not allowing us to get there. So um, whatever your practice or whatever you want to do in life, please know that I, I know you can do it. And if anything that you get from today, it's really to give you guys the spark to begin that journey on your own. Now the other thing too is FYI, um, I'm uh, just sorry, got the sniffles and so there's a whole thing going on up here which is unfortunate but it is what happens when you're going live okay now um so today what we're going to do is talk about i really want to impart the benefit of learning how to paint with three primary colors and beginning that foundation now when i started 50 20 years ago i really wish that a facebook was then there because i used to beg my tutors to have a discussion via the phone that i could ask them all these questions and they didn't do it but that's okay so um, I can't begin to tell you how excited I am to bring you guys this right now that, that I've got this opportunity. I'm like, totally, totally, totally stoked. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about the three primary colors. Now, when I went to various tutors early on, every single person would give me a list of what I needed to bring to the class. And I used to buy you know, tubes and tubes and tubes of paint. And after a while, I had boxes where I just had all these tubes that I hardly used ever. And I kept going back to my um, three primary colors. And when I say three, of course, I'm talking about the most strongest colors possible, meaning in your cadmium cereal four um, range, this is the strongest pigment. Don't get any hues or series one or series two. Um, they, of course, are gonna be too weak in intensity and are not gonna give you that same outcome. So when I talk about the three primaries, I'm referring to the strongest pigment of your cadmium red, your cadmium yellows, and your ultras and your Prussian cerulean or the phthalo blue, and I'll go into that a little bit more as well. Um, do I introduce any other colors in my artworks in terms of on my board? Sometimes I do, I will incorporate a little bit of Payne's gray. Um, at the end of my painting sessions, what ends up happening on my glass board is that I end up mushing everything together. I, I, mean, I don't throw that paint out, and it ends up into a gray, green, gray, uh, you know, uh, brown, gray puddle. And that tends to be used the next day. But if I really do want to add just something fresh, Payne's Grey is the only colour that I will put in there as an extra added bonus. Um, now, primary colours for me, of course, they are the foundation. I want to impart this. I can't, you know, uh, drive this point home stronger than I am right now. Primary colours are the foundation of everything you do. Think of it like a house. You are not going to build a house on any um, weak foundation. You need that strength in order to put the walls, windows, and the roof, and so forth. And so um, by learning to mix the primary colors properly, really what tends to happen is that you become your own mixing factory. You see, I mean, you can then, what, what direction do I want to go in? Where do I want to take this artwork? This is a benefit of learning, learning, learning how to mix that uh, primary colors and how to work with primary colors. And again, you know, why am I such a big advocate? Like I went to the School of Hard Knocks. I went to a couple of workshops and a couple of um, courses, but really I have spent all my life doing things on my own and, and testing and trialing. How does this work? Because I'm a hands-on person. I like to see how things work and how things uh, can be achieved. And what I did in the beginning stages when I started doing, uh, you know, for real, um, I spent one year actually learning how to mix color. And, and that was the most intense year of creating the most awful, awful samples of artwork ever. And so in that year, I learned truly how to mix and create and, and, and work with the three primaries. And so, you know, from that point forward, I really now just buy the best paints that I can afford and I create my own paint mixing, you know, um, uh, tones as per the mood, the emotion, the subject, the portrait, the landscape. So it's, it's, a, it's a brilliant knowledge, it's a brilliant foundation to have. Um, now, the reason why, uh, you know, if, if you're, I don't know what um, level of art you're, you're at this point, whether you're a super experienced, middle of the range, or just beginning your journey, I really hope to inspire you guys and give you as much nuggets as I can. You know, what happened to me is as I started painting, 
I um, started picking up different um, ideologies from different people and then I started incorporating that into my work. So um, if anything from today, take away the nugget that's going to actually ignite a new direction for you guys. Um, if you struggle to achieve a composition that is bright or clean or crisp, I can almost tell you with certainty that the reason for that comes back to how you mix your colours and your tones, the tools that you're using and then how you actually apply apply that particular colour to your artwork. So that's another thing that I wanted to cover today. Um, now, regardless of um, what colour tones you have been using, I've got to tell you also the things that I've been telling all my students is brush mileage is key. Um, the words that I'm giving you guys here and even the demonstration in a little while, it's, it's definitely going to um, give you some inspiration, but brush mileage is key. You have to start to do the work, you've got to put in the time and you just got to mix. Um, when I work with my own colours on my board, the difference that I do is that I actually spend a lot more time on that glass board than actually putting paint on canvas. And so if I don't have the tone right on the glass board, then you know I might as well not even use that particular colour at all. So that's where all the work happens. Okay, now the other discussion that I really wanted to give you guys a heads up on is when we talk about the three primaries is of course warm versus cool color tones. And this is super, super important and you'll start to see in a minute once we turn around the camera on that glass palette board and I start to mix why you need to A, understand the three primaries and B or two um, is to look at what category they fall into, warm or cold, warm or cold. Now of course remember, warm colors in a painting when you're creating a 3d painting they tend to feel like they are forward cool colors tend to feel like they're receding back in the distance now you know i'm about to give you guys the paradox in what i just said for seasonal artists and i know many they break that rule because they have learned how to manipulate the cold colors to come forward and the warm to go back but instead of getting to that advanced discussion, I want to keep it super, super simple. Remember, warm colors in a painting give you the impression that they're coming forward. Cool colors give you the impression that they're going back. So that's the importance of knowing your warm and cools. Now, here's a quick, 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 quick list of colors. You guys can do your own research, depending on whatever brands you're using, of course. Um, different brands advocate what colors um, their, their uh, paints fall into, but Alizarin Crimson, that's a cool colour. Cadmium um, Red is a warm. Ultramarine is warm. Pathalo Blue, by some companies, has been um, defined as warm. Now, the Pathalo that I'm using is actually, to me, it leans a little bit more into the cooler um, zone. But again, if you're not certain about your colours, for sure, Prussian and Cerulean Blue are definitely cold colours. Um, again, cadmium yellow is a cool colour, and if you want to go to cadmium uh, lemon yellow, sorry, cadmium yellow is a warm colour, and cadmium lemon is a cool colour. Now, that's a quick, quick outline on warm and cool, and again, I'll give you guys a quick um, look into how that works once we start to paint. Once you have your primary colours on your board, that's when we begin now to mix our secondary. So for example, secondary colors, again, just a brief introduction because I don't think too many people are talking about this. Your secondary colors are when you mix red and yellow, you get orange. When you mix red and blue and a little bit of white, you get purple. Purple is your secondary color. So again, for everyone that's just joined us, welcome. Um, the, the discussion today is really all about talking about the three primary colors and how we're going to use them. So. I might just turn you guys around because that was my timing for giving you a quick update. So just bear with me. I'm going to flip you guys around and we're going to start to mix a little bit of uh, paint. Again, if you've got any questions, um, this is only me operating today. There's no moderator in the background and I can't actually see all the comments. But please feel free to leave your questions and I'm more and more than happy to um, answer them after the live feed and give you guys a little bit more information for your own personal um, circumstance and situation. So bear with me, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we're gonna to begin to do a little bit of oil painting, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you guys a quick look. There we go, fantastic. Okay, so that's the color board 
or sorry, the glass board that I'm using and where I mix all my paint. Now, for the introduction, of course, quickly, again, I use palette knives. And one of the questions that I got asked was, what's the difference between using a palette knife versus a brush? And why do I use these tiny little brushes versus the big hog bristle brushes? And again, this is really a preference of choice. These brushes, in actual fact, are watercolor brushes, but I've just learned how to use oil paint like watercolor in my first washing stage before I then jump into the palette knives. Palette knives for me is where I ch achieve the um, crispness in terms of um, color, and um, thereafter, you know, the brushes pretty much get ditched. Okay, so a quick, quick. Um, layout i always lay out my paints in the same manner i really don't v from that the top section is my warms the bottom section are my cools and you'll see there's a cadmium yellow ultra cadmium red this one needs permanent magenta but you can use alizarin crimson as your cool Pasalo blue this is a medium that i wanted to give you guys a heads up on um, i don't actually use many mediums in my oil paints but the medium that i use here is purely because I like painting wet into wet. And the minute that I start beginning uh, any artwork, I will use that so that it doesn't dry quick, quickly for me. And then I can come back the next day and the painting will still be tacky and wet and I can continue that process. So that's the reason why I use that medium. Now, I know everyone's gonna ask me what medium that is. I don't um, advocate promoting um, any brands, but I will in this case, this is one that I found in the USA, in America, and this brand in particular is Flemish Marage. Um, I hope that pronounced that rightly. It's an old master's um, style that was used by the Flemish back in the, I think, 14, 1500s. And the reason why I like this is you can see up here, it's actually um, solid. The minute I take that, and you'll see that in a moment, it will turn into liquid. And that for me is incredible, incredible um, thing to have. So um, yeah, that's the only medium that I've got here. These two reds are basically um, what I had left over from another painting, but I will explain what that is in a minute. So the other thing I wanted to quickly talk to you guys about is the difference in quality of paint. Now the paint that I use, I kid you not, one tube, I pay approximately 250 Australian dollars. Now the reason for that is that it's incredibly high in natural pigment and it has natural oils. Um, the rest are all synthetic and I, again I'm not here to uh, discredit anybody rather to say is when you begin painting choose the best paint that you can I certainly don't like selling my work to uh, my art collectors and customers and clients uh, with anything else other than the best quality artwork and let me show you guys the difference between a synthetic cadmium red and an incredibly expensive cadmium red okay now, the cadmium red up here that you see, this is the expensive one. And I'm going to just um, give you guys, can you see that? Yep, okay, that's good. Uh, I'm going to place it on the toned paper up here. Now, this is the natural, with natural oils, natural pigment cadmium red. If I now go and take a synthetic version of that cadmium red and place it next to that, you'll see that it almost feels and it looks like it's an orange orange color again apologies for the for the um, lighting i kind of um, did my best to give you guys the best possible light that i could i might just zoom in and see if that's going to work no okay um so yes yeah, so that's the difference between a, a, a natural or a natural oil pigment versus a synthetic so this is a, a, a big difference here the other thing too that i probably haven't mentioned initially is you see these three different pieces of um, canvas paper here. Um, the, other, the question that, that was brought in from uh, one of a, a student, I believe, is what's the benefit in priming my canvas? And so I thought I'd give you guys a quick look into that. If you start painting on a white piece of paper versus any primed paper, and I'll talk about these in a minute, what happens is that the actual paint will appear to be a lot darker and you won't be able to assess color tone as um, with, with, with as much ease. So for example, if I take that same red, um, which is the cadmium red in the um, natural oil and place it on the white paper, can you see the difference of what that appears here to that point? I mean, it's absolutely you know huge. If I take that synthetic red and also put it on um, 
the white paper, it now comes through um, as if the uh, synthetic is actually less darker than the natural oil. And I'm going to bring that closer to, to the actual camera. There we go. So the difference in why you want to prime your canvas, at least from a perspective of when you're starting out, is that you want to give yourself the capability to be able to see the tones a lot easier because the same red looks different on white and it will look different on a grey coloured tone uh, paper and it will look different on an orange coloured paper. So from the ideology of how beneficial is it for me personally absolutely you know 100% beneficial so that's totally up to you and um, thus for the uh, lovely lady that asked him what's the benefit of priming my canvas this is the benefit so I highly 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 recommend that you guys do that um, now I'm going to put that to the side for a second and just draw your attention back to the glass board now the reason why I use a glass board because again it's super easy to clean and if you've noticed I've actually got a black uh, felt paper under or a black cloth underneath and that's so so that I can see the colors a lot a lot easier now let's go um, quickly and do a little bit of mixing and show you guys how easy it is to achieve and the reason why you want uh, to achieve color tone and the reason why you want to um, uh, learn a lot more about cool and warm colors so let's start off with I'm going to take in uh, a little bit of the cool red up here and plop it down on my board and I'm going to take a warm which is um, ultra blue and notice the different quantities that I actually put in there and just give it a quick mix. Now as I do that I also work in dabs and we're going to take a quick dab of white and notice how nice and sharp that purple comes through. Again just remember that Anything that you add white to, if for those that weren't to um, into that space, white actually makes the color cooler. Now, if you want to make sure that your color stays in the middle uh, color tone or the, the balance range, not too cool but not too warm, then what you want to add is a little bit of that yellow. And again, actually, before I do that, we're going to just pop that a little bit up here so you guys see that purple. So there's the, the, the tone, the cool purple with white. But if I add a little bit of, or just a dab, not a lot, into that purple, now it takes it into a warm purple and it's totally transformed it into a deeper warm green blue, if you like. So I'm hoping that that also comes through. Again, I'm going to hold that up as best as I can. There we go. Okay, so mixing your tones really is um, all about focusing on the little dabs that you, that you take. So remember, if you again, if we're going to go into the warm purple, take a little bit of that warm red and the warm blue, and now we've gone into more of a. Maybe we need to take a bit more of the blue. And, and notice how we've gone into a deep burgundy. So it's not exactly that crisp purple that we began with. So there we go, right there. Okay, so knowing what you're mixing is super, super important. Now let's come back and take cool red and that cool uh, blue, which is in my case, Pathalo. Now I really have to use a small amount because if I put in a lot of that blue, it's totally going to make it, you know, incredibly, incredibly purple. So add a little bit of that white and again notice the vibrancy of how nice that purple is, is turning out. So again whack that against um, a, a white piece of paper. Notice the difference of how it behaves there and how it actually behaves on a um, coloured background. So again I'm going to hope that you guys can see that versus the one at the top. So again emphasizing that priming a canvas is incredibly important or toning it with whatever color you want really that's that for me is an absolute must and an easy 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 process in how you can achieve clarity clarity with color so what i want to do now is i'm going to put that to the side um again in the interest of time because i know time's absolutely flying and i could give you guys like a whole day on just how to paint and how to work with um with mixing colors but I'm going to just briefly take the um, 
the toe orange piece of paper and what we're going to do is I'm going to give you guys a quick demo in how to do a lemon and, and really really focus on um, creating simple process in, um, in painting a lemon. Okay so I want you to, to just focus on the simplicity of A mixing the colors and B shapes and tones and if we're going to do a quick um, layout of a lemon there it is right there. I'm going to do a nice rough shape. Okay, that's my uh, quick shape using a brush. And now I'm going to switch over and use my palette knife just to show you guys the simplicity of painting um, with simple strokes, not too much complication. I'm going to take that yellow and actually work it into the purple. Okay, um, I know a lot of people are scared because they think straight away they've got to go into bright colors and mix the right, you know, bright yellow. And in this case, you've got to start off with putting the darks in and creating what I call muddy colors before you actually put in the highlights. So we're going to take that nice, um, which is a bit yellow ochre looking, and I'm going to make sure that that is going to be my um, highlight or my darkest dark at the bottom. Now I'm going to take in a little bit more of that yellow into that same puddle and a little bit of the cool and warm blues and I've taken it into a green okay so I've, I've totally I've changed the color value of and the tone and I've just added a little bit more of that yellow maybe a little bit more and create a new puddle up here. Now make sure you've got tissues and lots of paper um, around so that you guys can have a clean clean palette and you'll notice that every time I take a new tone actually my palette's always clean so um, I probably waste more paint that I actually put on I'm not going to take that green that I mixed before and I'm just going to incorporate it a little bit not too much on that lemon and also blend as I go now you'll notice that my palette knife is going horizontally but what I'm going to do in a minute um, I'm going to move it vertically as well so that we start to give the lemon a little bit more curvature. Okay, um, a little bit more of that yellow and I'm going to take it into the warm. So I've got a cool, now it's a cool green and now a bit more of a yellow ochre yellow um, or a warm yellow. So that's probably going to go up on that middle point there. Okay, and now I'm going to go into focus and bring in the highlights same puddle I'm not changing um, the, the, and the reason by the way why I'm using the same you know going to that same puddle is because I want that consistency if I start a new mixture that's going to be my pure tone and my pure color so I don't want that at this point so I'm going to put that right at the top there we go Now, remember I said to you, I'm going to work that so that it goes horizontally and vertically. Whoop. At the same time, the thing with still life too, is you want to actually ground what uh, your still life is sitting on and give it um, a, basically like a table or where it's sitting. Otherwise, your still life will look like it's floating. So that, that's really important. That's the whole quick... Um, paint underneath now okay so that's a quick lemon demo to be quite honest but I'm going to now take the pure yellow so that's your cadmium yellow up here and introduce a little bit of white into that and just to give you guys a quick highlight uh, I haven't actually used any of these because in this case this is my pure pure tone so I don't want to um, muddy that at all I'm going to take that a little bit on my palette knife and just run that across now the highlights of course I would do at a later stage I don't do them on the same day but in the case of of this demonstration I really wanted to just show you guys how that would work um, but yeah I always leave my highlights to the last last process last moment um, otherwise I'm gonna lose them too much and I, you know I don't want to actually do that and I love leaving my work for the next day too. I want to see how it sits and how it behaves and what is it that I need to correct. So that's another thing that I really like to do as well. I'm going to take a little bit of this purple also that I mixed in there and just introduce a different tone in that. 
in that you know table or background or whatever the case might be and just correct some of that okay so that's a quick demonstration on mixing and using the palette knife and focusing on color tones um, like I said um, can you guys see that okay I think that's come back good there we go so like I said to you guys it really is a simple way of learning um, the, the ideologies of course focus on knowing your colors in terms of warm cool ultras warm the phthalo for me is cool um, again mediums up to your choice and white they're the only color tones that you really really need I mean if you take a little bit of that blue and again dip into your white you can create so many different colors in terms of you know uh, the range of blue the more white you add into that of course the whiter or the, the, the lighter it becomes I should say if you want to keep it again in the balance point of your tones add a little bit of yellow and now you're taking it um, into a blue green which to me this particular color can be used in the middle section of your painting so uh, sitting between foreground and distance so learning how to mix and work with your primary colors incredibly incredibly important because you're able to mix any color that you want again remember use the best colors that you can um, otherwise you will run into challenges of not being able to see and create the pure pure tones that you want and like I said the, the um, tubes that I actually use are in the range of $250 but again I really you know I've reached that point where I'm focused on being able to give the best that I can um, otherwise the synthetic colors for me just don't work that well so um yeah that's a quick tone a quick overview on mixing colors really really simply just remember again a quick cap um, and a quick summation if you want to mix any tone if you're putting in white it's actually going to take it into a cool zone but if you want to keep keep that middle of the road add a little bit of um, a, a warm yellow and it keeps it into the neutral it doesn't actually take that too much into the cool um, family of, of, of your of your tone so whatever you're doing I would suggest that I would start off with really small small dabs the, you know if you're putting in too much paint you're gonna be using that within you know two or three minutes and you're gonna waste a lot of your paint so um, just stay focused on mixing it slowly and gently the work always gets done on your glass board um, it's where all my focus goes and it's from here that I then pick up that paint and then place it on the actual canvas so if the work isn't right here it's not going to be right on your canvas so that's really really important um, okay so I'm gonna spin you guys around and um, just sum it up and give you um, a bit more of a advanced or actually got me a little bit more depth into the questions of the palette knives and I'll cut and um, yeah I, that's pretty much it for today but um, let me spin you guys around one sec okay cool um yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed that um 30 minutes goes incredibly fast and um i'm really hoping you're able to see that like i said i just got the equipment and incredibly happy to be live with you all but i wanted to just um again dive in a little bit deeper of the palette knife if you're going to paint with palette knives start practicing um these are not like um you know i know a lot of people talk talk about them like as if they're um tools for icing a cake they kind of are but not to that extent for me personally i've always said to all my students when you work with a knife i always hold it this way i don't hold it with a finger that way because that tends to jab into whatever you're doing you want the knife to be an extension of your arm up here and that's why i work with a knife you know how did i come about to actually working with palette knives you have to know what kind of an artist you are and by that i mean how do you like to paint I'm the kind of a person that I like to move. I've got music in the background. I, you know, somebody told me that I paint like a, a fence musketeer. Um, so for me, a palette knife is very immediate and crisp. And when I discovered that that was my way of how I like to paint, the brushes got ditched. Um, I moved away from being detailed. It was more about the energy and capturing that emotion and listening to my intuition and and knowing what color to put on. And so thus the palette knife but certainly if you like brushes use brushes like it's not a big deal 
the idea here is that if you are frustrated because you can't get crisp color then i certainly certainly recommend just moving to the knife really important a quick note too you'll notice that the knife has got a step and this is really important i've seen too many <laughs> students god bless you all that come into my class with uh, cheap tools please don't do that for yourself because you'll find you get frustrated a good quality palette knife uh, for painting will have a nice ridge and the reason for that is that when you start to paint notice it's not going to hit the canvas underneath the other thing too is it needs flexibility that little blade if that blade hasn't got flexibility you're not going to be able to, to move the paint around so that's another important factor to look for in good uh, palette knives and so yeah i hope that that answered the question of why palette knives and what their benefit is of course there are different other you know ideologies they use them for mixing paint on there but that, that's another story altogether the last question, of course, like I said, what's the benefit of uh, using coloured, um, painting on coloured versus not toned paper or canvas? The answer is really, really simple. I'm going to bring that really close and hope you guys can see that in a lot of detail. Um, that's the same red as it is there. Oops. And, and you'll notice that it appears far brighter on a grey coloured tone. Than it, than it appears darker on a white colored paper. And that's the benefit of priming your canvas. I remember when I started out, not many people talked about that. Um, and that's okay because obviously they, they just, um, they didn't, but that's cool. But as I started diving into this ideology, for me personally, I started to be able to see um, colors far, with far more ease. And so if you're struggling and unable to see color, I strongly suggest that you do that. So I'm going to show you guys again that lemon that we quickly did in that two second demonstration. And again, you notice that the red that I used up here, that's the, the, the really expensive cadmium red and with, with natural oil. And that's the synthetic red that I um, give you guys a, a quick example on with um, not with the synthetic um, oil in there. Again, you know, if you can't afford to get the best the best colors please don't stress start off with what you can afford but what you'll find as you're moving through the journey of art you'll want to definitely um, look and get the best colors possible now again i don't advocate any color because any brand because i don't want to um, dictate what you guys use listen to your gut have a research and speak to your um, providers that sell you the paints or go online um, certainly my paints come from the UK you know who you are thank you um, and um, yeah I absolutely love love what they do now the other thing too by the way is why do I use the best paint because they've got the natural oil in them what tends to happen is that the paint is less likely to crack and um, less likely to fade over time so that's the other reason why I incredibly love, 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 love this particular brand. So um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys. I hope that that was a nugget for you or something to take away. Again, thank you all for tuning into the Art Corner. Really, really appreciate you um, watching and maybe taking something away that time um, you guys haven't been aware before in your work and hopefully do something different. Um, I, like I said, I don't know where everybody's at in terms of their art journey, whether you're advanced, middle, or just starting. So um, again, yeah, please feel free to give me your questions. Happy, super happy to um, answer them after I finish the live feed. But going forward, I definitely want to do more of these live feeds and maybe even do a demo, um, whether it's still live or something with a little bit ease that I can fit into a 40 minute um, live session. I'm definitely going to think about that. Like I said, 30 minutes goes like this. So, um, wow. Again, thank you. Until next time.